Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a blue well with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I'm going to go over the brushes and colors that I used for this tutorial. Only five colors for this one, so Prussian blue, titanium white, Mars black, turquoise blue and cobalt blue. If you don't have Prussian blue, you can sub that for phthalo blue or any kind of dark blue, like an ultramarine blue. I used a one inch flat brush, a number 12 bright brush, a number eight round brush, and I used a number four round brush. If you don't have the uh, one inch flat, you can use a three quarter inch flat. I've been using this big flat lately instead of the three quarter to fill up uh, the background of paintings just because the bigger brush makes it uh, apply faster. Um, I used a toothbrush to create little splatter effects of the stars and the splashes inside the water. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Blank white canvas positioned in a vertical format and we want to measure 10 and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas and make little marks so that we're just gonna use those marks to help us figure out where that sky starts and where the water starts. So we have an underwater scene and the scene of the water is kind of um, curved downwards and it's really pretty blend of black, Prussian and turquoise. So those are the three colors you see me loading onto my palette and we'll also need titanium white. Um, but for now, let's work with those three colors. I have a one inch flat brush that has been loaded in the water and kind of tapped dry, but you can see that there's still water on that brush. A little bit too watery than what I would have liked. A uh, little water, but you shouldn't have it to where, see how it's like almost watercolor consistency. That was a little bit too much water, but it's okay, we'll work with that. Um, we want to start at the bottom with this black and we want to fill maybe an inch and a half on the left and right. But do you see how I'm painting this to where it's kind of going curved? It's curving down inwards. Um, that's the style we want to do for this entire water area. It's very, very dark at the bottom. And then I grabbed some of that Prussian and I blended some of that Prussian into it as well. So it was like equal amounts black and Prussian and it still looks super black. So let's wipe the brush off, um, not rinse it, but wipe it off, and then grab that Prussian, beautiful dark, dark color, I love this color, and blend that in so we have the black kind of turn to like that navy blue color, and then grab your turquoise and blend that in downwards, and the turquoise is very lovely with this Prussian. So you wanna work that transition zone a little bit. So I took that turquoise, here I applied that above where I added the Prussian, and I just gently kind of dragged that paint downwards, left and right, curved direction, and uh, went over where it transitioned several times. It doesn't have to blend perfectly. You can leave it kind of streaky, and that's kind of the effect we wanna go for with this underwater scene. So we went up about an inch with that turquoise, and we wanna rinse all the way off Wait, rinse that brush all the way off to get all that black impression off so that we can have some areas where it's just pure turquoise and none of the black. So we can take that turquoise, blend that up a little bit. So I'm about halfway in the water area. I'm gonna add titanium white to my palette and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of skip up here at the top and with just the white, so this white is actually turning to like a light aqua color and that's okay. Uh, but I'm using just the tip of the brush to define the top of that water. So I know where I'm going here. So I kind of went to the end, to the finish line, so I know where to go. And still that curved line, and then I'm just taking that white and gently blending this downwards. So this top part of the ocean water is very light turquoise in color and it doesn't have to blend perfectly. We can have the streaks. We wanna take this and we wanna bring it to our pure turquoise area, still painting in that curved sort of direction, using the full width of the brush, very gently bringing that white down into the turquoise, curved strokes back and forth, 
be careful not to overblend. We don't want this all to turn the same color. Ideally, we want it to be light and bright at the top and then super dark at the bottom. Before this dries, I want to go back in and maybe just add a little bit more pure turquoise in that brighter area. So I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Of course, if you like the way your water looks, you don't have to go back and do this. But without rinsing the brush, I just grab the turquoise. And right here, I'm just going to grab a little bit of that, that turquoise, blend it in very gently. I don't want to overpower the light, but I'd see how I'm just kind of leaving those streaks, those darker streaks in there. And it gives it that um, sort of water reflection texture. So then I'm going to rinse and I'm going to do the sky next. So I'm still going to use this one inch flat brush for the sky. Squeeze that water out. We're going to grab Prussian blue. We're going to do left and right strokes. So in the water we did curved strokes in the sky. We're going to do left and right strokes. So the sky I started with Prussian blue a little bit lower than the top and then grabbed my black and blended that black at the top. So we want our sky to be super pitch dark at the very, very top edge of the canvas. And it gets just slightly lighter as it approaches that water line. And then we can even grab some titanium white here. It might turn it like a light, not really light, kind of a, almost a blue gray color. And just taking that and add a little bit more white to my palette. Just taking that lighter color and going down with it. And um, so it's going to be a little tricky here because we don't want to lose that curved line that we have in our water line. Um, but we want to make sure that the sky is as close as possible to it. But I am going to kind of leave a gap there on purpose. See how I did left and right strokes. When as close to the water as possible, but still left kind of a gap. So we will take care of that gap here. I'm going to add titanium white to my palette. And I'm not going to use the flat brush for this. I'm actually going to grab my round brush. Actually, let's do the 12 bright brush. So this is smaller. I can get into this smaller area where the gap is. And I'm just going to use titanium white. I'm kind of applying this sort of thick on here, but I'm creating that sort of almost like there's a wave right here. So it's pure white. It is blending with, so if your turquoise is still wet, it's blending slightly with that. It is blending slightly with the Prussian. We still just want to kind of paint that edge of the ocean water. So it's kind of a thick line. A little bit wavy. We still want to maintain that shape of that curve that dips downwards. And then I'm taking this white and just making a few little kind of loose strokes that are still going in that curved direction to create a little bit of light reflecting in the water at the top. A few, we can drag a few down below, but not too much in the dark area. Next, we're going to use the toothbrush to splatter paint. So we want to create stars in the sky, but also it's okay if the little splatters go in the water area. So what I like to do, it's just a very old toothbrush that I use for this technique. And so I like to use my finger to apply a little bit of water to the brush and then a little bit of the white paint. You want a consistency that's not dripping, but you don't want it too thick either. So you want to just kind of find that nice balance of white with a little bit of water. Test it out on a different surface first. And then when you get the fine little splatters that are not dripping, you can do this all over your painting. So in the sky, doesn't really show up in the light part of the water, but it will show up in the dark part of the water. And then we're going to draw our whale with a piece of chalk. So you want to make sure everything is dry before you start drawing this in. And we're going to start at the top. I'm going to draw the edge of his tail 
And I draw kind of this like banana shape where it's thinner on the left and then it gets thicker on the right where the whale's head is. So quickly gets very, very thick. I'm gonna have this curve down. There is a tracer template for this if you wanna use the template. The nice thing about this chalk is that it will erase. So I'm just loosely drawing these lines. And we want to start creating this division down here to where the bottom of his, so where his mouth is. And this, I'm gonna go about halfway there. And I'm going to adjust this bottom curve to be a little bit more thinner. And so if you need to adjust your drawing, you can use the soft baby wipe to erase. And then we need to fit in his tail here. So if you want, you can have the tail go above the water. I kept mine below the water. Just drawing two curved lines. They go to a point on the left and the right. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And then extend that back down to the body and I want to finish this division line right here so let's start it like a little bit down from the tail area kind of curves down and then a sharp curve over here so we can draw his flipper so it kind of goes diagonally down to a point this one right here is kind of below his under belly region. I'm gonna adjust this right here to kind of curve a little bit more straight up. It's almost like he's looking upwards. So when we go to paint this in, it might be adjusted a little bit more, but this drawing is a nice guideline for starting with painting this whale. We can do his little eye. His eye is just to the right of that flipper. And I'll erase some of this right here. kind of clean up and redo this area. So I believe we're done with the drawing and let's start painting our blue whale in. I am going to mix a blue gray color on my palette. So I have cobalt, titanium white, and Mars black. And I will be using a number eight round brush to start. Um, but probably switching between the eight round and the four round, depending on the area. So this is the eight round. Let's mix equal parts, cobalt and titanium white together. So that's gonna create kind of a lighter blue, a little bit of water in there to kind of loosen that up. And then grab just a little bit of black, not a lot of black, just a teeny bit of black in there. That's going to gray I I don't even know if that's a word. It's gonna make your blue a little bit more gray. And I'm gonna start in the back, kind of outlining the shape of this tail. Lots of curvy strokes, and then fill it in solid. 
same right here, kind of outline the shape of the tail. Um, I do this thing to make my colors vary, but if I'm going to reload or if I'm running out of the paint color I'm using, I'll make it again. But if it doesn't end up being the exact same shade again, that's okay. I kind of on purpose make it slightly different so that the colors blend on the canvas. You create this sort of color variation that happens. Make sure painting looks a little bit more interesting so it's not just all solid the same color and just kind of slowly filling that in so we have our tail painted in we can go back and add highlight and shading to this later but this is just the first layer I'm gonna start filling up his back here so I'm bringing this down, just long, curvy, contouring strokes that really go in the direction of the shape. So we have a back, his back. So again, mixing that color again, but if it's not the exact same color, see how it ended up being a little bit darker, that's okay. Just blending that in, long, curved strokes. So his top part of the back is this pretty light blue gray color. Um, I will need to cover his eye, but that's okay. We can go back and redo the eye later. Just making sure the edge of his back is nice and defined. Right here, I grabbed a little bit of more white on my brush because I want the very top part of his back to be lighter. And I'm doing just wet on wet blending here, letting that blend on its own. And then, so adding a little bit of white right there on the brush. We can take that white and extend it to the right side of his tail. So now we added a little bit of highlighting on his tail. Um, I'm not going up against my chalk line. I'm actually kind of adjusting it. His back is not uh, like completely smooth. It's a little bit, you can, it's a little bit lumpy on the back. It's kind of these stretched out sort of wavy edge on his back. So this is more of that white. When we start painting this lower part here, I want that lower part to be darker. So right here I added more cobalt to my brush and blending that in. I'm gonna use that cobalt to paint. So this is like cobalt with a little bit of white, a little bit of that other gray color, painting that flipper in. The right side of his flipper is a little bit lighter. So I'm just kind of outlining the shape of that and then filling it in. Letting those colors just kind of blend together. So if you want to just paint this solid first, you can and then you can go back and add shading and highlighting to it later. I did make that fin a little bit lighter on purpose so it stands out. Next I'm going to use a baby wipe to very carefully kind of clean up these chalk lines specifically towards the back. Um, you just want to be really careful not to smudge any of your paint. But I went ahead and cleaned up some of the chalk lines at the top and then I'm going to paint the under part of the whale. So this is titanium white and the number four round brush. So this is a smaller round brush than the one I was just using because this is a smaller area. And I'm just slowly filling this in, curvy strokes that go in the direction of the shape. And then again, I will likely kind of adjust this and not go all the way to the chalk line 
go almost all the way but this is a smooth line not a like a bumpy line like his back and right here is all white filling that in solid white going around his flipper and then I'm going to take this white if we need to adjust like redo the shape of his flipper because we painted some of the white over it that's fine i'm gonna continue to paint the rest of this area white long kind of curved strokes filling this all in solid we don't need to worry about shading just yet just really defining this area painting it in solid white long stretched curved strokes be kind of careful right here to define his under mouth area Before this white dries, I want to start adding some shading into this so it's not solid white all throughout, specifically just under his mouth. So without rinsing the brush, I grabbed a little bit of black, kind of spread it out on my palette just a bit. So it's really more like a super dark gray now that there's a little bit of white on my brush. And I'm just gonna drag it from the far right part of the under part of his mouth and drag it down so that part's a little bit shadowy and then I'm going to outline this part so where that blue meets the black just very loosely outlining so that white is still wet and this is blending a little bit more black right there on the edge kind of drag it down I'm not doing those uh, ridges those lines yet just adding shading we'll do those lines later so that part is now a little bit darker I'm just going to take this outline this right part of his flipper so that's a little bit dark right there on the edge and the left side so right here on the left that one was outlined all throughout I'm going to take that white, this part, change that so that part is a little bit lighter. This is like a light gray color just on the right side. Kind of loosely blending that in so we have kind of a gray color on the right side of his flipper. I'm going to rinse my brush off and going to paint his other flipper so get that gray black color off of my brush I'm going to load more cobalt blue onto my palette and I'll just use this cobalt blue to paint this flipper in Little bit of titanium white on my brush as well and on the right side of that kind of highlighting that and then blending that in so that right part of his flipper lighter and it gets darker you could add more cobalt and blend that in you don't have to do a perfect blend and then a little bit of dark using the black on the far left side I'm gonna take some of this black. And so if you're applying this and your black is too dark, add cobalt to it to lighten it up on the right side of his tail fin. I did a little bit of outlining and then I kind of right here where that dark blue meets the white, adding that little bit, it's black and cobalt. So it's not solid black. It's just like a like, really dark blue gray. Then I'm going to take my baby wipe. Again, be very careful 
If you're erasing chalk like this, just be careful not to smudge any wet paint but the chalk lifts right off. The longest bag, I could go and lift off any leftover chalk there as well. Helps to see what we kind of need to adjust or if we need to adjust anything with the paintbrush. If we missed anything, so be very gentle. Sometimes, especially with this drawing, I went over my lines multiple times with the chalk. So there's a lot of chalk on this. Sometimes it takes a couple tries of this to really lift off all that chalk. But you don't want to press too hard with that. You don't want to lift any of the dry paint either. So the background color should not be lifting off. <laughs> so erasing very lightly. I'm going to go back with my number four round brush in titanium white and I'm going to touch up all of the white edging on the bottom of his belly area. So this titanium white, twisting the brush to get that paint right there, kind of gathered on the tip of the brush so I can really have good control with this. But right here, I'm just going to make this very smooth edge. And then I'm going to add some white on his back and I'll show you what that's going to look like. And just making sure this part is touched up, the edge is nice and smooth. So when I lifted that chalk, a lot of the edging was not so clear. So I'm just going back and redoing the edge of that. And then for his back, I'm going to take my white and very loosely. So this would be kind of a highlight right here. So remember the back isn't smooth. See, it's kind of like wavy. I'm really just kind of going in and like defining that little very thin white line right there on this edge so that line doesn't have to be consistent kind of fades and gets thinner back here so the light that's kind of reflecting at the top of the water area would be reflecting on the top of his back I'm adding some highlight to his tail as well so like a little curved line at the top and then the right edge. You can kind of drag some of this down. Next, I'm going to paint the eye in. So this is still the number four round brush, titanium white. So let's see the placement of the eye is maybe an inch to the right of his flipper. So I'm gonna do like a little, almost like a cat eye shape. Do that solid white first, and then I can add black in the center of this after this white dries. And next, I'm going to start painting some of the ridges on the bottom part of the whale. And I'm going to start with the number four, although I'm going to switch to my eight round because it's got a thinner point, and these lines are very, very thin. So I like, can try it with this four round brush. This is black. And I'm going to just very lightly kind of start sketching one line in and I can already tell, see how that line is just too thick. We can try to kind of water it down a little bit and twist the brush, but really um, I'm going to switch to a much thinner point so that I can get these really thin lines in. I'm going to load some more Mars Black onto my palette here and do the number eight round brush. So this brush even though it's a bigger round brush, it has a nice point to it. So if you have another brush, if you don't have this exact brush, but if you have another brush that has a really nice point to it, like a liner brush, that would potentially work for this. But I'm just using the very point of this to paint these very loose lines. I'll go in the curved direction. So back here, this just kind of fade off. They don't have to be equally spaced apart. See how they just kind of fade away? Not really, it's not very 
not a lot of ridges in the in the way way back um, and under here so these ones are going to be more visible more distinct so lines going curved I'm just curving it up and just kind of releasing the brush as I go up very loose lines I'm going to take these lines and start at the edge the end and just do have them go down and connect to these lines And then right here, and make these lines a little bit more distinct. So those lines are like super close together up here. Also, it's kind of dark and shadowy. Re-outline part of that flipper. And then I want to add some textured spots to various parts of this whale. So I'm going to add them to this flipper right here. This is still the number eight round brush in black. And I'm just using the tip of the brush to stipple little dots, mostly in the bottom right area. Some of the dots are a little bit bigger, some smaller, kind of just scattered apart randomly. That's a little bit of texture. And then we can add these little dots in other areas, like this little dark area right here. I'm going in there and adding a few dots, a few over here as well. This whale is not intended to be super realistic. It's more of an illustrative, stylized whale. So the little dots just add more interest in it. I'm just going to loosely kind of outline that mouth area. And I'm going to add more dots over here, left side of the tail. Little dots kind of scattered, some big, some small. If the white part of the eye is dry, we can go back and add more detail in that with the black. So this is number eight round and the Mars black. I'm just going to paint another cat eye shape, same shape as the white, but on the inside of that and leaving the white border left on the outside. So I'm just painting that solid black. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to create some kind of contouring strokes using the four round. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but just adding some kind of stylized sort of contouring strokes around the eye, almost dry brush style. So very, very loosely with the cobalt. There's still a little bit of black on my brush. Just a few kind of curved strokes throughout. I'm going to rinse both of these brushes off and wait a little bit for the black part of the eye to dry and I'm going to add a little white dot inside of there. Pinch the bristles there, get that white right there on the tip. Just on the right side, it's a little white dot. And this next step is optional as well, but if we want a little bit of that water reflection kind of reflecting on the whale's back, we can take our number eight round. So this is because of that really fine tip. So use your brush that has the nice tip to it. White and very loosely. Just did these like wavy lines over here on the right part of his tail as well to kind of make it look like the water is reflecting on his back. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shading on the bottom of the whale's belly. So number eight round brush. Let's mix like this gray, medium gray color. I don't want this to be black, but just darker than that white. But I'm just taking it a little bit more black in there so it can show up. 
and kind of dragging it at the bottom right here, kind of in between the grooves. I don't want to mess up some of those lines that I did. So just a little bit of shading down here towards the bottom, but not covering all of it up. little bit white outlining on the right part of that flipper and then I'm going to go and kind of dim down with the cobalt blue here some of that dark when I did the contouring strokes it's a little bit darker than I wanted going back over some of that and this one down here Dimming that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to take the baby wipe again, erase any leftover residue. I know we erased this earlier, but for me, that chalk was being a little bit stubborn and still kind of showing up. So I'm just going back and making sure it's all erased. The final details in this painting include adding a little bit of splash up here at the top. I'm just taking this titanium white and the number four round brush, just kind of like bubbling this part of the water up, even though his whale is, or his tail is under the water. Um, there might be a little bit of splash happening right here. Um, so I'm just kind of stippling like these little dots around the tail. Just keep it very simple. We don't have to make super detailed splash or anything like that. So that part of the water bubbles up just a little bit compared to the rest of the ocean top water line. And then this was really fun down here. I loved how this effect, because it's so dark down there, we can play around with these bubbles. So I'm just taking my number eight round brush and creating little white dots really scattered around the flippers. So they're even like up here under the mouth area, kind of go in a line diagonally downwards. If we want, we can add more. Um, the, the little white dots don't show up that well in the top area because it's so light. But down here, they're very pretty. You can add a few kind of scattered throughout, but mostly close to the whale and going in like a diagonal direction. I also added stars in the sky. So with the eight round and just did like this little diamond star. So you do like a little dot and you drag the little lines upwards in a vertical direction and downwards or left and right horizontal. You can do little diagonal lines. If you want to make your stars look like they're glowing, you can make a little dot and then take your finger and you could smear it and then do your star over the part that you smeared. So that creates that glowing effect. So really I just kind of created stars everywhere. If you want, you could do a constellation. So I know we splattered stars earlier, but adding the extra brighter stars creates nice variety. And then I also went back and did more splatter with the toothbrush, this time paying close attention to the splash area. So the tail, a little bit above the water, was kind of fun. And then down here below where his flippers are, a little extra splatter down there as well. The splatters really add fun energy to this painting. The last few touch-ups I'm gonna do are more stars. And I also did a few more water reflection lines. 
So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is still titanium white, still the, um, the number four round brush. And like right here, so we did this earlier. I'm just adding a few extra little curvy white lines, not too much. You can even have some of that overlap the tail. So I'm just very gently, we don't want to cover up all the tail. But that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a blue whale. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.